hear Michael's talk, and I have a slightly different approach in my research. Michael is, I, I'm more systems-oriented person, so I'm giving you more the global picture on pain, a little bit more what type of primary alpha nerve fibers actually mediate the sensation of pain, and uh, might therefore be important for chronic, uh, sorry, might therefore be important for uh, chronic pain <coughs> conditions. And I will just give you basically the basic 101, and I hope, although this, uh, this day has been labeled as the day of pain, that your experience with the of pain will be kept to a minimum. So please uh, bear with me, be patient. Um, so as Mike already pointed out, pain is an unpleasant and sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. And my, the focus of my research is really what type of efferent nerve fibers uh, are mediating, are involved in this pain sensation. And uh, as you might know, we have basically uh, four modalities of, of somatosensation. One of them is mechanosensation, that's, that's the, uh, so that we can get uh, the size, the shape, the texture of objects. We have the thermosensation that allows us to detect warmth or cold. Proprioception that gives us a sense of the position of our own body in space. And last but not least, uh, we have a sense for pain, uh, nociception, so to speak. And my research focuses on this nociception. And what, what do we understand under, under nociception is basically the neural apparatus uh, and the mechanisms involved in encoding noxious stimuli, conducting those uh, signals to the CNS, and the processing of the neural activity in spinal and supraspinal centers. Uh, so how do we actually sense pain? And as uh, Dr. Katarina already pointed out, we sense them through specific efferents, which we call as nociceptors, or primary efferent nociceptive neurons. And these neurons have a very characteristic uh, that makes them exceptional to other uh, uh, channels, sensory channels involved in somatic sensation. And that is that these nociceptors are polymodal. They respond to uh, multiple uh, stimulus intent multiple uh, modalities, for example, mechanical stimuli, thermal stimuli, and chemical stimuli. All the other senses of somatic sensation are very specific. They only respond to a certain stimulus energy. For example, mechanical, the mechanical sensation pathway will only respond to mechanical stimuli. Uh, stimuli. So that these nociceptors respond to multiple stimulus modalities is very unique. Uh, their primary affluent neurons sit in the DRG, and as Dr. Karina already pointed out, they have one axon that goes into the central nervous system, their central terminal and their peripheral terminal goes into the skin. So if you think about it, this is an axon that stretches basically from the tip of your small toe all the way to the spinal cord, uh, a meter and a meter and a half. Um, so these uh, nociceptors actually in the skin, this is a uh, uh, picture from uh, Justin MacArthur and Jack Griffin in the Department of uh, Neurology, where they produce the PTP 9.5 staining in the skin. And what they are showing, that these nociceptors end up as free nerve endings in the uh, superficial layer of the skin and the epidermis. And again, this is something very unique. All the other uh, somatic sensations, the uh, nerve endings, peripheral nerve endings, end in specific end organs. Nociceptors do not do that, they end as free nerve endings in the skin. Uh, the skin is of very great interest to us. First of all, it's the largest organ for uh, somatosensation. Secondly, we can apply stimuli to the skin and study actually how nociceptors innervating the skin uh, react to different stimuli. And also we can use the skin in correlative studies in humans, in psychophysical studies, and ask actually what do you feel? What do you experience? How big is the pain? So it allows us to uh, study basic aspects in animal experiments as well as correlative psychophysical studies in humans. That's why the skin is so important to us. So how do we actually sense pain? Now just as an example from how do we uh, sense painful heat from greater skin. And the most common nociceptor in, in, in uh, humans as well as in animals is the so-called polymodal C-fiber nociceptor. Here's just one example where we exposed 
the receptive field of the neuron to a stepped heat stimulus from 38 to 49 degrees. And here above there you see the neuronal recording how this unit is responding. Now you can use these stepped stimuli, stimuli, you can modify the intensity of the heat stimulus and you can actually generate a so-called dose response function. And what you see is that those C fibers, the discharge in the C fibers actually increases as the uh, temperature of the stimulus increases. Warm fibers, those fibers that just mediate the sensation of warmth, do not encode in the noxious stimulus. In fact, their response function is uh, in the inverse U shape, their response decreases. So the only afferent fiber that can is able to mediate the heat and sensation from skin is the C fiber, uh, the polymodal C fiber. And what uh, Dr. Katerina already pointed out is that the uh, the discharge in those uh, C fibers actually very well matches the pain ratings that human subjects uh, re uh, report in response to the similar uh, heat stimuli from their glabrous skin. Now there's something very funny about uh, heat stimuli, and that is that uh, uh, when you apply a heat stimulus to your glabrous skin, you only have one pain sensation, and that sensation usually uh, 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 responds with a long latency of around you might have experienced the sensation after a latency of about 800 milliseconds. However, if you apply the same stimulus to the dorsum of your hand, to the hairy side, you actually have two heat sensations. And there's actually one heat sensation that you will detect with a very short latency of around 200 milliseconds, which is a pricking kind of sharp sensation. And then you also will have the uh, similar to as on your glabrous skin, you will have with a delay of around 800 milliseconds a more burning sensation that is mediated through C fibers. So this double pain sensation clearly indicates that there's another set of fibers mediating pain sensation in this. Because of its short latency for detection, it argues that these are actually A fibers, and these are small myelinated A fibers that detect this increase in heat stimulus, and the uh, one characteristic about the C fibers is that they are basically uh, not responsive to mechanical stimuli. So this is a, in, in, in contrast to a polymodal nociceptor that is able to detect mechanical and heat stimuli. This is a nociceptor that responds to heat but does not respond to mechanical stimuli. And this one is uh, important for the first pain sensation, pricking pain sensation that you get to a heat stimulus. An A fiber block uh, uh, of the radial nerve, for example, will completely get rid of this uh, first peak and you will only get the second pain sensation. Uh, just very briefly, how do we detect uh, mechanical painful stimuli? This is actually from an experiment that Walter Marga did together with uh, uh, Meyer in our lab and where they applied this kind of mechanical stimulator to the dorsum of the hand and what you see is this a pricking kind of probe that is loaded with a weight with an increasing rate, and when you increase the rate, you can see that the pain rating actually is increasing. Now, when you perform an A fiber block, uh, you can actually see that that pain rating is dramatically uh, decreased. The A fiber block can be produced, for example, by applying pressure to your superficial radial nerve. You wait a little bit, the A fiber block sets in, and then you get, uh, besides uh, losing the sensitivity to mechanical stimulus, but also use the sensitivity Cold, but with this a loss of A fiber activity, you get a dramatic loss of mechanosensation to this 